So how do you manage that? Full screen? A view and a view. Yeah. Uh, full screen mode. Yeah. Oops. Thank you. So you can. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. And uh, we're going to have Saba uh, from UQ telling us about the economic benefit of diving in marine protected areas. Thank you, Sarah, for coming. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think before I begin, I should give you a brief background about myself. I think it's quite important to understand where this work is coming from. Um, basically, um, I, I graduated in environmental economics, looking at energy economics in specific, and then um, did a one-year postdoc in uh, University of the Basque Country, just looking at energy economics. And then um, two years got funded by the European Commission looking at the valuation of coral reef ecosystem services in developing countries. And I acknowledge their funding for these results, by the way. And after that, I realized I've switched between energy economics to now ecosystem services. And it was quite important in carrying that work um, to join even the um, School of Biological Sciences here in UQ because I could work with ecologists and biologists to understand more coral reef ecosystems. So I'm quite privileged to be here in Australia, but also in UQ, in the School of Biological Sciences, to try and, and uh, deepen my understanding on marine ecosystem services. So this is one part of my journey, and I'll, I'll be grateful for any responses or any questions you have that I can enrich uh, this work. Um, so briefly, uh, I'll start off with an introduction on MPAs, which we generally know what it's all about, then the motivation of doing this, and a little bit more about the survey details, because you, when you do an evaluation study, you, you, you have to qu be quite particular on the survey that you're carrying out. And then a little bit on the results that I have conclusion and then the next step. As I said, this is preliminary and I'm working towards um, uh, a publication that hopefully um, will come together soon. Um, I don't know, I like New York Times. <laughs> New York Times just gives you a brief idea what is going on in terms of the public but also the government, what it's trying to do. This was a um, Reason one in February, where the editorial wrote a piece on how marine protected areas is very important, and I quite like the point that saying government scientists working together and you know protect the protected areas. So what is a protected area? Um, we all know this, but again, I'm just reiterating the importance of the socio-economic and environmental part of the uh, marine protected areas. Especially, we need to be aware, and we are all aware that it doesn't not only offer the recreation or tourism, but it's also we're thinking about conservation towards fisheries, restoration, and um, uh, protection, uh, as I said. So, in this respect, in this work, I I focus only on tourism, um, and the reason being. The values that I wanted to calculate was at the global level for different marine protected areas around the world. So uh, I, again, I say it's quite important we capture all values for different services, um, but this is one part I can do. So a, a brief introduction again to the, um, the different targets of global marine protection um, uh, areas around the world. I mean, you know that the World Park Congress had um, a target, also the C CBD, which is a Convention of Biological Diversity. Uh, this one, this work was just done uh, by Wood et al. in 2008, just showing you that if we were to um, increase or predict the increase to meet this CBD or the WPC target, it would take us 
a long, long time to reach there. Um, for instance, if uh, we say in 2012, if we started off at 2006, and they had, I think, 5% increase. So the predicted increase, if we had 2012, it would reach us 2080, somewhere there, to um, increase the marine protected areas by then. Anyhow, importantly, it is expensive to run a marine protected area. Not only expensive to run, but also to establish one. And this varies with the size, with the number, or even the location. Um, for the diving one, because I'm concentrating diving as a tourism or recreation, um, I will refer to Logos at our study, because their study was looking at global marine protected area sites only for recreation, which was diving in particular. And they found that only 10% of those they surveyed could actually meet sufficient budgets in running the MPA. So one of the motivations which follows in the next slide, but the most important thing I think what I was going with this was try ultimately to start determining the fee, structure, the fee structuring um, of marine protected areas globally because we know that, and this is a study even done by, I think, Green in, in their work, that they found out the entrance fees are quite low to what the willingness to pay is. So we all, I mean, if you really read these studies, you find that willingness to pay is usually higher than entrance fees. But the primary motivation that drives me in this study are two. Um, first, I was interested in divers' perceptions and tensions, intentions in terms of willingness to pay in supporting a global or marine protected areas around the world, especially developing countries. And also, the second one was, if they had a choice and different substitute, how would they determine where they want to go, considering different attributes of different sites? Um, number two, I put it an asterisk because it's still work in progress, but it will involve a random utility model using a travel cost method. Uh, the first one is a contingent valuation method. So. Um, you may wonder why did I use a contingent valuation method rather than a choice experiment. I completely agree that uh, contingent valuation, in my opinion, and just doing a pretest study, it generates the total economic value, but also in the survey I had a value orientations of different respondents, so I wanted to capture that total use and non-use with those value orientations. That was what, why I chose contingent valuation. Uh, so the survey data uh, was only targeting divers, and because it was only targeting divers, it was a non-probability sampling, because you had a diving list that targeted a specific group of people, and I was using different social networks too to do that. Uh, again, just like any other valuation study, it has different uh, sections, and um, I had the perception, I had the contingent valuation, I had the travel cost, and the socioeconomic information. I protested this work in a global diverse exhibition, so whatever they told me, I went back, revised, came back, all that. <laughs> uh, so it was online, and you know that online response rate is, you'll be lucky if you get 50%, um, because generally 30 is what the average is, and even I've seen a study that has 100%. Wow. So um, uh, I obtained about 50%. So I, I had quite very few uh, protest zeros. Basically, you follow them up and you ask them if they say, no, I'm not willing to pay anything. Then you find out the reasons why, and uh, these were the main primary reasons why they, they, they said, I'm not going to pay anything for that. Uh, the respondent's profile, uh, many are coming from North America, uh, as you can see in the last column, um, in terms of the proportion, um, then Europe, pretty much less East Asia and Pacific. Uh, the income, it's quite high, so you'd say they're higher middle income uh, respondents. Um, 
gender, male, most, I mean, pretty much most of them are male. Um, perception, I was interested in this presentation, I'm showing you only the entrance fee, the, 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 the links between the MPAs that they visited and the entrance fees. Um, so almost 80% um, the visited MPAs of all those respondents is quite high. Um, highest visited country in descending order. Um, the, the reason why italics, uh, the other countries, I, I won't call them the developing country because they're high income countries. And then developed countries, but of course you've got upper level, uh, upper middle income countries there like Thailand, I would say, Mexico, but still Egypt, Mexico, Philippines, uh, pretty much uh, were the, one, uh, the three were highest in terms of the number of uh, visits the, um, the, the respondents have, have, have done. And then 70% of the total respondents have paid the entrance fees. Uh, they, most of them as shown, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, it's the proportion of the respondents uh, who have paid entrance fee by countries, of course, Australia. I think the other one is Mexico, the, the, the next one up there. Uh, I should have uh, shown more, um, my mistake there, I've shown different countries, but uh, the highest one was Mexico because it was one of the um, key countries that people have visited, followed by Australia. The next one, hmm. I, I don't recall the other one. Uh, views about MPAs. Um, pretty much all of them agreed that uh, that MPAs can help restore or recover coral reefs. Uh, they also believe that their role in conservation is quite important. So um, it's all positive in terms of their attitude to an MPA and what they can support and how they play a role. So some of these results, I don't know if you can see this, but this is just descriptive statistics that were used in the final um, estimation. By the way, I have to have a disclaimer. I don't have images. I have no um, equations too. So I went straight to the point because I wasn't sure with the audience how it is. Uh, the most important thing is this is uh, when I gave this uh, valuation online it was a it was a interval in terms of it's a ladder. So you ask them what is their maximum and you give them a range to choose. Um, as you know, maybe uh, there's open-ended questions, double-bounded questions, but this was an ladder question, so choose the highest that you can um, uh, pay. But these were the main variables that were finally used in the analysis. Uh, I had a, a categorical, most, most of them, I would say they're categorical, and oh, not, not only categorical, but also dummy variables, most of them. I, most of them dummy and a few categorical. I don't think I have any continuous variable that I used here. Well, but I attempted different uh, ones just to get the, um, the final estimation. Um, so the final estimation, what I found out was with the final responses, when I did the final estimation, it was 455 responses. And um, aggregate all these socioeconomic and also perception and all, um, to the final estimation, I found out the willingness to pay was $13 a day above the average entrance fee of 10 So there was in the question that said, your average, your average entrance fee at this time is 10 How much more are you willing to pay above this? towards a habitat fund managed, blah, 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 by local administrators. Um, but I found it very interesting um, with regards to uh, the shark one, especially because 
you would think that, especially in, in Australia, people are very curious to see biodiversity, not only biodiversity, but also sharks when they're diving. But it seems that in this work, people were willing to pay more if they didn't see a shark. But then I, I kept on exploring on the data and I found out it's just because it seems that regionally where they're going to is not Australia or other parts of uh, where sharks are seen more adventurous and, uh, and so because it's developing country in different parts of the world, they were less keen to see those sharks. Um, MPA trust was very, very important too. I mean, you can see that um, also agreeing to pay high fee, it positively influenced uh, willingness to pay. Um, so there is support by divers for MPAs in developing country. Um, I reiterate the positive influence that you get from those who trust that the funds will be managed well by, by the local uh, or um, the management and then conserv um, young divers who are willing to pay more and people who are working indoors positively affected that. I think what is also important here in the work that I did in, in which I haven't shown all of it was um, people felt distrust, especially with local communities and corruption. It's, it's quite important in, in supporting uh, financially um, local MPAs. Um, with regards to transparency with fee requirements, I think that, that was one thing that also came out, not from the contingent evaluation study, but from just the qualitative analysis of their view. Um, that the reporting of global network of marine protected areas is it, it, it sort of um, doesn't account that all the um, um, the issues that are happening. Like we don't have all information about the global protected areas in these networks. So I think. What I'm hoping to do next, not I'm hoping, but definitely doing it, is uh, completing the results from the random utility model, um, where it's basically looking at the substitutes that we have, the other substitute sites, and comparing that with the different attributes, especially four key attributes that we have in mind. is the cost, the travel cost, the quality of the coral coverage. We did have a question that asked them when you visited these parks, how was the quality? We had low, medium, and high, so that's that's quite important. But also the biological diversity, what they were willing to see, and the trip information, how, how much of their time did they spend finding out about these different uh, sites. Um, the other step from this work is actually working along with the data that we'll get it our have, and that is with the costs. And so just doing cost-benefit analysis would be quite helpful in seeing what the number of dive, uh, number of visitors they have out of that diving survey they did on the cost, and matching that with these benefits and trying to do a cost-benefit analysis. Um, so that's all I have for this time, and I can thank my uh, funders for this program, um, which finished last year. Thank you all. I welcome any questions. Any questions for Sarah? Yes. Just, just as a curiosity. Um, um, yes. I've, I've, I also tried to get some uh, values for uh, conservation um, and, and especially threatened species. And and I and I got to read a lot of uh, studies that we're trying to get really next to pay to protect uh, Sumatran tigers, for example. And yes. So it, these studies are very valuable for yes. our work. Yes. And, and but but I also find it difficult once I was um, trying to reference these studies and say, um, you know, we we have a benefit. Um, we we have a, a 
willing us to pay here, yes. and we're using that value, and, and people were like, well, no, it's you can't really use that value. Uh, and I was just wanting to have your perspective on that. There's a kind of mistrust uh, in a way from these numbers that are used, and then um, it's, it's hard for us to manage mm. some kind of management uh, effort. Um, right. In this but I was, I was just yes. very interested in uh, yes. getting, getting your opinion about that, and, and I'm sure you have this. Yes, I, yes. It's like a classic. Uh, yes. It's, it's a classic uh, comment that you should always get every time. Yes, uh, I, 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 I agree with you and um, I, I, I had to do the similar thing for uh, fish species that people are willing, you know, they, they've seen it before and people are willing to pay more to see that. And I was doing a bioeconomic modeling for that and we didn't have um, a benefit for specific, that specific fish we were looking at. So, but you could use a proxy, so we use a proxy. So I, I, I agree with you that it depends on the audience too, like who is reviewing the paper yeah, or, exactly. yeah, it it's, like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, who, yeah, like yeah, but coming from an environmental economist point of view, it, we quite understand that, like if you have to use yeah. a proxy to try and capture a value that there's no, yeah. there's no other value out there that can can specifically target that type of uh, mm -hmm. species or so. And I've seen actually published work that have used implicit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah, it's quite tricky. Work has been published with others, yeah. and work has not been published with others using those values. So. I, I can't say more than depends on who's reviewing and who agrees and disagrees to that. Yeah. But I think citing other works that people have used such implicit values can help. So just just following up yeah. on that, well, one yeah. issue we had is that the same greenness to pay um, yeah. study with uh, actually, if, so it's always about protecting uh, yes. uh, smudging tigers. Yeah. And so in, in the US, and uh, which has you know, millions, well, not billions, but uh, a lot of money to protect the smudger tigers, but then uh, in Sumatra, you know, where the yeah. conditions are actually uh, responsible for to get them um, to protect the species, of course they don't have any money. Yeah. So the money was like just like maybe uh, $2, yeah. right? Yes. $2 was, was a lot in Sumatra. And, so that, that was the issue, and I was wondering, in, in your study, you know, you have all these different countries from the Netherlands, and mm. you couldn't see such a big difference, like, it wasn't as bad, but, but, but. Mm. I, I think the very good point to answer that question would be um, benefit transfer, mm -hmm. but um, then you're talking about looking at a meta-analysis of all the works that have been done in Tigers and trying to find out how you can transfer that to Sumatra. Yeah. But I, that could be one way, but that, that's another work. Yeah. But also, um, um, I, I think you're talking also about equity issues between developed and developing countries. And like, this is this. But in your study, it, it, yeah. wasn't, it, it, were, like, it was quite, uh, it, it wasn't that much of a difference between the, the different countries. So it's. It, mm. I think, in my opinion, I haven't even done that by aggregating the different countries. Oh, yeah, that was the, the countries, yeah, I, the I, target I, countries, like the NPS. The yeah. Countries. I think it would be interesting if I geographically look at the willingness to pay for different uh, areas, because as you've seen, I've shown Egypt, yeah. I've shown Indonesia, yeah, but try to break up that willingness to pay according to the geographical areas that I think that would be interesting thank you for that yeah. I could have a look at that but also um, this disparity is another thing within in terms of equity in transferring the values okay. I, I totally agree with you mm -hmm. yeah but if you can find a comparable tiger study in a developing country maybe you can yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. any other question People are there. there. There's only one question, but I don't understand very well. So, what is it? It's, is it function or specification? <laughs> um, I don't think I consider yeah, the function of the coral reefs in there. I think the function is interesting when you're analyzing ecosystems. That one I have to point out. It's 
when you're doing willingness to pay, but I'm learning, as I said, I'm in the School of Biological Sciences, we, we tend to neglect the ecological functions of a habitat. And I think that is really, really important because we scientists make up the survey, I mean, not make up, but we design the survey, we take it to respondents, but the respondents are answering the question the way you tell them, but also the perception, how they understand ecological functions could be different from you. So um, I have to point out when we are looking at valuations, it's, it's quite especially of habitat, ecological functions and processes as something we need to work on. So um, and this is a big gap. So uh, yeah. uh, that's a good question. There's no there's no doubt. It's a very good question. Yes. In the field of environmental pollution, uh, there's a long concept of the polluter principle. Mm, principle. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think, in my opinion, you're bringing a very good question in terms of the cost. First, of, well, first and foremost is establishment cost. It, it's usually very expensive for an MPA, um, which is a sunk cost. Once they've done that, then they have in mind the duration, how long they're hoping to invest in that uh, area. Uh, but what is also important is um, in marine protection area, it, it's also about the number of visitors they're receiving and the cost of running it. So it's the running, once they've established it, they have to think about running this whole marine protected area. And by the way, some marine protected area do not allow diving, for instance. It's only, they're different types, different levels of marine protected area. So in some, they allow, depending on what they're conserving, uh, or their target or their uh, aims. But uh, I think it's also important to remember that if the running costs are high and the government cannot, especially in developing countries, cannot run it, and if you have to enforce the area and you have people who are managing it, you have to get some money from somewhere. So it, am I answering your question? If in the developing countries, yes, uh, maybe it will be different for the, the national people, domestic people, to maintain it. But uh, there are many visitors from uh, mm. developed countries. Yes. They may get, they may be able to maintain it. Yes. But, uh, uh, so my question is uh, about uh, what percentage uh, or what proportion of uh, the 
registers can make contribution for the total cost for total necessary budget to the other MBL. I, I, I don't have the details, but I think it's interesting to do the cost-benefit analysis just to have an idea if uh, what we are aiming for in terms of these areas, the co if the benefits of what we are having can um, are they positive? Uh, what uh, uh, this does from developed, developed countries right. may contribute much in Project area. Uh, so, and uh, this does uh, may pay much money for travelers mm -hmm. from different, different countries. Yes. So, they may have some capacity for payment. So that is a yeah, I have some papers about travel constitutions. That is the domestic travel, so not so much. So what part of the question do you want me to answer or do you have how much how much do you participate for the contribution from the ministry? Um yeah. I, I I won't have a precise um answer to that because you have to also consider in some of these marine protected areas there are different services uh, not only diving but also they could be doing other things recreational things so um, I wouldn't say I know for sure this diving will these funds will or oh, this willingness to pay will cover 80% I, I can't say that because I'm just looking at one part but it will be interesting to do that holistic of different uses within a marine protected area and seeing that proportion to its meeting these costs. Um, I think it's an important question. So, um, and this is why I've seen case studies. If they have to analyze such such proportions, that they do only a case study, a very site specific. So to do this one. This is why I'm trying to hopefully with that cost benefit, just to see the cost benefit. But I won't, I won't be able to say the proportion towards meeting the cost. I, it, it, it's something that I think in my conclusion when I said transparency and ac accountability is that we need more information, and I'm a strong believer in this. Um, of a database, uh, I know there's the World uh, Marine Protected Area uh, data set, but also I think if there is a network of an MPA around the world, then they should be able to publish, inform especially if we're paying for these services, then they should be accountable to show us the number of visitors that we can at least know what is going on in an MPA. But it's going to be a very difficult um, task to us, a global network of marine protected areas, but I think it could be one way forward of 
accounting a lot in developing countries too. Yes. Hi. I was just going to say that um, maybe using uh, World Heritage sites in yes. developing countries could be a good base for that kind of comparison because you yes. do see that real difference in fees like at places like Angkor Wat in Cambodia yeah. and Taj in um, India where you see a local payment that's a lot different. It might be a good baseline comparison yeah. for what visitors travelling a long distance are willing to pay in comparison to a local. But also what is interesting about the World Heritage, I think also they have to account it, they have to report uh, to the World Heritage, um, so the UNESCO, uh, so that, account that accountability is, is, is should be part of the uh, meeting the requirements. So it will be interesting also uh, to, to look at. Right. Visitors can move to a green place by visitors, maybe very different by places. Yes. So, uh, it is different to say uh, it's a 20% or Yes. But uh, if we have such kind of image, then uh, you can think most. Uh, Public funds or funds from industries and the visitors to contribution. Yeah, I, again, I, I, it is it is quite important with yeah. data. But so um, that is a, mostly for practical management. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. So uh, and, uh, if you such kind of information or some concepts based on the research background, then, um, yeah, I, I, I am interested. Okay, we can talk later. <laughs> okay, welcome. Any more questions? Thank you. Thanks again, Thank you for thanks.